I ask myself the question, who am I? Every single day, every single minute. One thing about Ethan, once he wants to be interested in something, he dives like all the way into it and wants to know everything about it. I heard smells like teen spirit in my dad's Ford that had the cassette player in it. I was like, what's, what's this song? It sounds really good. <laughs> I will always be grateful that I can play by ear and I can remember facts about music. It's a bootleg, but I still think it's really cool. I think this is a reissue. 1994 reissue? Apparently this is about Courtney Love. This one came with the classic uh, Sub Pop Singles Club. This is the limited edition French Rhythm of Love. Kylie Minogue cassette. Oh, and I bought this one, Iron Lung, Sexless No Sex, because the old lady at the desk said like, are you sure you want to buy this? So then I purposely went to find the most crude thing I could and I like put it at the counter and I was like, here. I don't like letting people push me around and say like, you have to listen, like you listen to this, listen to that. Like I listen to what I want. After dad got me the blank mixtapes, um, this was around the time my mom passed, so it, it was it, it was kind of sad because on the day mom passed, I think I got my first um, blank cassette actually because it came in the mail. It took forever. It was supposed to come like two months, and I was excited to like make a mixtape for her, but things happen. In honor of her, I like made a whole lot of mixtapes. This is actually uh, an, an important one. My mom made some videos of her telling stories from like her childhood and talking about like my birth story and all that, so I recorded on the videos to the cassette. My wife and I were high school sweethearts. We were together since we were 17, up until when she passed away when she was 41. We were both into music, and so music was always present in their lives from a very early age. Once Ethan was old enough, he started taking piano lessons, and it just sort of kind of took off from there. I was five when I first started playing the piano, and I was eight and a half when I started playing guitar. The last thing I really want to show you is um, this, because this is my technically second album, which I got custom printed on a website. It's called Television Supervision. I came up with that title, and I'm so proud of it. It's been interesting watching Ethan evolve in terms of like recording music on his own because his recording has gotten more and more sort of sophisticated as he's gone along. For the Space Mouth album, it's been very cool to see him build it like a puzzle in terms of like the drum track and then the rhythm and, and bass and things and then the lead guitar and, and then he can add vocals as well. And it's been cool to see him evolve with the way that he produces his own music. Try to run from pain, but I regretted it. Whenever I fell down, I said I deserved it. I have a song called Don't Speak, Don't Tell, which is actually about people that are afraid to come out. He definitely uses songwriting as an outlet to express how he feels about social issues and, and political issues, and he's always wanted to express himself in his unique way, and I definitely support that. He's very self-confident and he can defend himself, but I get nervous about kids at school. My mom showed me a lot of feminist groups. That was important for me. Even though I'm not female, or I wasn't born female, or I don't identify female, as if someone that's feminine, <laughs> feminine, I can still relate to that. I'm not, I'm not even trans, I'm not even um, female, but I still get um, hate for that because people assume I'm one of those two, or both. I've had my teacher at my school just watch me get bullied and I'd be called the F-slur and he'd do nothing about it. So I think that's when the song, I was like, fine, you're not gonna do anything about it. I will, I'm gonna write a song. I don't care if no one else hears it. I'm gonna write it and get through it myself. 
for me personally, music isn't just healing, it's hurting, but it's hurting in a safe environment. MVM originated in youth residential treatment centers where we work with youth experiencing crisis and trauma. Over the last 15 years, we've worked with so many organizations in our community, and we've been honored to serve about a thousand youth a year through these satellite outreach programs. And one of these partners is the Dougie Center. Dougie Center provides grief and loss resources for youth and families in our community. And last summer we had the opportunity to work with them in a workshop called Death Jams. Death Jams workshop was brought up to me through the Dougie Center as a way to express feelings of grief and loss through music and at a professional studio. So I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Death Jams is the name of a playlist of music I started collecting when I was 14. My mom had died from cancer. And so those songs helped put words to what I was experiencing and in some ways were one of the first peer groups I had around grief. So I just started a little website where I started writing about the songs I knew about. I'd also been volunteering at the Dougie Center. Ian had recently passed away in a bicycle car accident. Grief and death and loss were very present for the folks at My Voice. So we started talking and planning around what would something like this look like. We would start the day with the Dougie Center opening circle with name, who died, how they died, to connect all of our shared experiences. Monica here at My Voice Music led them through, you know, creativity exercises or talk about some of the music that we really go to when we are wanting to feel sad or feel angry or feel happy and helped the kiddos understand what was in the music that made them feel that way. And then we'd go into, you know, writing mode as a band. We get into the room and start working with creating an original piece of music. So Tuesday was like writing poetry and like trying to get a melody for that. Ari and I kind of like started like having like a personal connection. We started like kind of like actually like laughing and smiling and having fun. Thursday was recording. It turned out really well. Ari and I each got one CD with the song on it. Whenever I write a song, I like imagine what it would be like on vinyl, or imagine what it would be like on cassette or CD. I wanted Left Behind to be relatable to more and more people, not just like, my mom died. That sucks. I want it to be like, everyone goes through grief one point or another, that's fine. Grief, especially in our culture, is relegated to such a a place of aloneness or, or separation or solitude. And I think what feels really powerful about programs like this is that we're giving it space, we're giving it community witnessing, we're holding it in a way together so that we're saying it's not all on you, you don't have to feel this and, ex and experience this all on your own that we're able to share because it's universal, but we have isolated it so much that there is such a healing power to just being witnessed with it and sharing it together. Community grief, it's really important for our healing and so to be able to do that with my voice music and with partnership with the Dougie Center and with Death Jams is really beautiful because we're not alone. We're not alone in our grief. We're not alone in our joy and we need each other in all of it the celebration to the grief and the loss and the despair. We can move through it together. We don't always have to move through it alone. We have each other. It's all about community at My Voice Music and that's what's so important because I thought it was gonna be a one-time thing and I was already excited for a one-time thing and then here we are. I can't wait to go back to the studio. I want to record an album. I want this to be called The Debut. It's the real me, where every song I put so much effort into and so much depth into my music. 
it's gonna be basically drowning myself in like the music and like the, you know, emotion. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional, but it's like a really important experience. And it's something so beautiful and something I really needed to, especially to get through like the past year because, ugh, middle school.